Ladies and gentlemen, please back, welcome back Peter Robinson. Václav Klaus. When the Soviet Union invaded Czechoslovakia to put down the Prague Spring in 1968, our next guest was forced out of the Academy of Sciences. 21 years later, he became a member of Civic Forum, the uh, resistance group, and three years after that, he became Czechoslovakia's first non-communist minister of finance. But to call Václav Klaus a non-communist does not even begin to do him justice. A member of the Mont Pelerin Society, he is an ardent advocate of free markets. He served twice as prime minister and two terms as president of the Czech Republic. After his country had endured more than four decades of faceless communist bureaucrats, Václav Klaus presented a man who knew his mind and how to express it. No one, I think this is fair to say, no leader on the planet has made more extensive or vigorous use of freedom of speech or prompted more debate in his own country. Today, Václav Klaus oversees a free market think tank in Prague, the Václav Klaus Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, a hero of the Cold War, the former president of the Czech Republic, Václav Klaus. Good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, many thanks for both for organizing this conference, for bringing all of us here, and for giving me a chance to address this distinguished audience. I am pleased to be here because I find the topic of this gathering highly important and relevant both for Europe and America. Ronald Reagan and John Paul II did change the world and significantly influenced Europe. And as a result of it, the lives of people like me, of people from the former communist Central and Eastern Europe. I'm an economist who always tries, try, who believes in the law of um, comparative advantages, and I am always trying to maximize my comparative advantages, but this time I'm afraid I have a comparative disadvantage here. Um, I am not, and I don't pretend to be an expert, lifelong expert on Ronald Reagan or on John Paul II. Nevertheless, they were part of my life, of my personal experience. Let me say a few words in this, in this spirit. Let me start with two factual remarks, perhaps reservations. Um, I, first, I am not convinced that we should speak so strongly as it has been done during the whole day to speak about partnership between Ronald Reagan and John Paul II. As I see it, it was at the very most an implicit partnership only. They both parallelly, as was mentioned here several minutes ago, parallelly defended freedom and traditional Western conservative values and attitudes. There is no doubt that the synergic effect of their parallel activities was considerable. We in the Communist Central Europe felt it very strongly. Both of us, both of them, were a great inspiration for us. Our communist leaders, on the contrary, regarded them as a threat. This was my first comment. Second, the title of the conference mentions Ronald Reagan and John Paul II, two very important names, but um, the title doesn't mention a third one, which was 
at the time no less important. I have in mind the name of Margaret Thatcher, who I believe deserves to be mentioned as well. Reagan and Thatcher were politicians. John Paul II was the Pope. He benefited from the opportunity to experience the reality of communism in his native Poland. These three individuals, more than anyone else, changed Europe and the world. Some people would probably want to stress especially their extraordinary role in bringing communism to an end. Yes and no. Yes, because there is no doubt about it. No, because it seems to me they did much more. Why not to concentrate on the end of communism only? When speaking at a conference in the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in California in November 2009, on the, on the occasion of the 20th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, I made a point that, I quote, the European so-called Helsinki process was toothless and naive to bring any results. And the only real help from outside that accelerated the final collapse of communism came from Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, who understood that words alone were not enough to bring the end of this evil empire." Unquote. They understood more than anyone else that the Soviet system and the Soviet expansionism had to be resisted, not just considered wrong. The role of these three exceptional individuals can't be denied. We should remember it again and again. In spite of that, I always keep stressing that communism collapsed, that the main cause behind its collapse were the internal problems of the regime itself, that at the end of the 1980s, communism was already weak, soft, old, and emptied of all meaning, and that there was almost no one seriously defending it. However, without Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher, and John Paul II, its dissolution would have taken much longer. An hour ago, Edwin Mies mentioned the same point, uh, and he said it would last it decades longer. I disagree. I would think in terms of years, not just decades. As I said, these three individuals didn't just help us in Central and Eastern Europe to get rid of communism. They did much more. They noticeably changed the West itself. They understood what was wrong with the relatively prosperous, as compared with us, relatively prosperous West of the 1970s and 80s. They looked with critical eyes on the victorious leftist ideology that began dominating Europe and the whole West and dared to oppose it. They had strong ideological views and very loudly defended Western conservative values. They reflected and expressed the wisdom of ordinary citizens, not of political elites, and with this background, they succeeded to change the tide of public thinking. They were not contented with pursuing a pragmatic policy only. They were able to inspire. Ronald Reagan in America and Margaret Thatcher 
in Britain returned to the people the already almost lost belief in capitalism and free markets, which was a standpoint fully in opposition to the prevailing spirit in Europe, especially in Western Europe at the time. It was different in Central and Eastern Europe. In the last stages of communism, Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher and John Paul II were regarded as heroes in our part of the world. We didn't pay much attention to European politicians such as François Mitterrand, Helmut Kohl or Jacques Delors. They were no inspiration to us and we did not expect very much from them. They were not actively advocating the good old Western values and didn't stand firmly and explicitly against communism. I do regret that the West didn't use the fall of communism to make a decisive step forward. The end of communism proved to be a crucial moment in a positive direction only for us or mostly for us in the former, in the former Eastern Bloc. After traumatic decades of oppression, irrationality and frustration, we were forced to go through. We very much enjoyed the birth of freedom and democracy and used it to fundamentally change our societies. The West felt a refreshing relief when the communism disappeared. But together with Francis Fukuyama came to believe we were approaching the end of history, the end of ideology, the end of conflicts of visions, etc. It was naively supposed that the Western liberal system will prevail all over the world and will last forever, which proved to be fatally wrong and misleading. It led to recklessness and irresponsibility. The resulting loss of attention caused a substantial shift of the West to the left, to the dominance of the new left, to the liberally progressivist left, which together with the Greens took control of all mainstream political parties and has become a chief factor in the formation of, of new ones. We, who spent decades in communism, are very frustrated to see that the pendulum that the pendulum has returned to its long-term equilibrium position, which is very far to the left, away from Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. To my great regret, the impact of this unique and exceptional trio of truly legendary personalities turned out not to be permanent. It brought about only a short-term or perhaps medium-term change. Its original effect has already fully evaporated. The prominent personalities of the contemporary Europe are politicians such as Merkel, Macron, May, Juncker, or the new Pope Francis. The name Reagan, Thatcher, or John Paul II ma are more or less forgotten. Are we aware of that? And do we actively try to do something with it? 
I am afraid not. Where to look for new upholders and advocates of good old conservative ideas and values and at the same time for able, persuasive and trustworthy politicians who would be able to make these ideas dominant again. Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher and John Paul II possessed all of these characteristics. Was it a lucky, exceptional, highly improbable historic coincidence or something which regularly comes because the mankind deserves it. In this respect, I am rather pessimistic. Thank you for your attention.